Are you ready to experience a breakthrough in your financial journey? Well, stay tuned as we explore how the power of faith and biblical principles can transform your financial situation. Welcome to the Ask Ralph podcast. We're listening to an experienced financial professional with over 30 years of experience can help you make sense of confusing questions, current headlines, and industry trends about taxes, small business, financial decision-making, investment strategies, and even the art of proper budgeting. Ask Ralph makes the complex simple by sharing his real-world knowledge from a Christian perspective with all things financial. Now here's your host, Ralph Eastep Jr., Welcome back to the show. I'm excited to dive into today's topic with you. Have you ever found yourself in a tough financial situation? Hey, we've all been there. Feeling overwhelmed and unsure of how to find a way out? Well, today we're going to talk about a powerful approach to healing your finances in Jesus' name. Now, don't forget to subscribe to our show and join our email list. You do that at askralphpodcast.com because you don't want to miss tomorrow's show when I'm going to be talking about PMI or as it's commonly known, private mortgage insurance, and how you can stop paying for it. You don't want to miss that episode, folks. Could save you thousands of dollars a year. Before we dive into the practical steps today, let's ground ourselves in Scripture. The Bible has much to say about our finances and the importance of seeking God's guidance in this area of our lives. It's a very important part of our lives, folks. Let's start with a verse from the book of Proverbs. This is Proverbs chapter 3, verses 9 to 10. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. See, folks, in this verse, King Solomon encourages us to honor the Lord with our wealth and the first fruits of our labor. Not the second fruits, not the third fruits, the first fruits of our labor. By recognizing God's provision and dedicating a portion of our income to Him, We invite his blessings into our finances. Now, this isn't a podcast about trying to get money from you. I'm never going to ask you for money, not one time during this show. But it's all about giving your first fruits to God. This verse reminds us that when we prioritize God in our financial decisions, he will abundantly provide for our needs. So practically speaking, this verse teaches us the importance of tithing and giving. You don't know how many people I see that don't do that now. Set aside a portion of your income as an offering to God. It's His anyway. Trusting that He will bless and multiply the remaining resources. How can you expect God to multiply and increase your resources if you're not giving the first fruits to Him? Additionally, seek wisdom in managing your finances, making responsible choices that align with biblical principles. Ask God for His wisdom. God, I'm in a tough spot financially. How can I fix this? Pray about it. By honoring God with our wealth, we invite his provision and experience the healing power of financial restoration. It's not easy. You're not going to do it on your own. But this is a place to invite God into this. So now that we understand the biblical foundation, let's explore some actionable steps you can take to experience healing in your finances. I don't want to just give you hollow talk and ramble on about something. I want to give you action items that you can put into place. So let's start with step one. Evaluate your financial situation and seek God's guidance. The first step is to honestly assess your current financial situation. If you don't look at where things are from a realistic perspective, you're never going to solve the problem. Take a close look at your income, your expenses, your debts, and savings. Pray and seek God's guidance as you evaluate your financial picture. Ask Him for wisdom and discernment to identify areas that need improvement and where He wants you to focus your efforts. But it all starts with taking an honest assessment of where you are. It's not going to fix itself on its own. You have to assess where you are. The book of Proverbs, chapter 16, verse 3 says, Commit your work to the Lord and your plans will be established. This verse reminds us of the importance of committing our financial endeavors to God. When we surrender our plans, and we all, listen, we all do this. We all have our plans. But when we surrender our plans and seek His guidance, He will establish our paths and provide the wisdom and resources we need to succeed. We can't do this on our own. We need His guidance. We need to surrender our plans and seek His guidance. 
as you evaluate your finances, commit your work to the Lord. Pray and seek his direction in creating a budget. That's the first step of this. Create a budget. Be realistic. Look where you're spending your money and look at a better way to do that. Reduce your expenses. Ask God to to show you ways where you can reduce your expenses. Maybe you're spending things on things that really aren't in the kingdom, things that you really shouldn't be doing. And listen, I'm not going to judge you. Judge yourself. Do that self-evaluation and ask God to give you wise financial wisdom to make better financial decisions. And trust, trust that as you align your plans with his will, he will establish your path to financial healing. Let's talk about step number two, and that's practice faithful stewardship. If you listen to my show at all, I always talk about stewardship. We were given gifts. Those gifts are given to us by God, and we have an obligation to be a good steward of them. The second step is to cultivate a mindset of faithful stewardship. Recognize that everything you have is a gift from God. So I talk about gratitude all the time. It's all a gift from God. And it's your responsibility to manage those resources wisely. That's what stewardship means, to manage your resources wisely. Well, let's look to the Bible. The book of Luke, chapter 16, verse 10. One who is faithful in a very little is also faithful in much. And one who is dishonest in a very little is also dishonest in much. Boy, that cuts sometimes, doesn't it? Let me read that again. One who is faithful in a very little is also faithful in much. And one who is dishonest in a very little is also dishonest in much. In this verse, Jesus teaches about the importance of being faithful with the resources entrusted to us. And again, they're entrusted to us. They're not ours. Whether we have a little or much, our faithfulness in managing what we have reflects our character and readiness for greater blessings. You know, if your character is no good, then why do you think God is going to bless you with more? If you're not faithful with the resources he's always given you, why do you think he's going to bless you with more? So what's the application here, Ralph? Take inventory of your financial habits and attitudes. Are you faithfully stewarding the resources God has given you? That's a tough question. Let me ask it again. Are you faithfully stewarding the resources God has given you? Are you being honest in your financial dealings? You know, I've had clients come in and they tell me, my business isn't growing. And we have a discussion about what they're doing and they're cheating people left and right. They're not offering what they say they're offering. And they wonder, you know, why is God rewarding them? Well, if you're not even being honest in your financial dealings, how in the world do you think God's going to honor that? And like I said, I'm not judging anybody. Judge yourself. Seek to align your actions with biblical principles of integrity and wise stewardship. Now, you can start small with this. Start small by creating a budget. Track your expenses and consistently saving a portion of your income. What is this going to do? My personal walk, I've done this. And as you demonstrate faithfulness in little things, God's going to entrust you with much more. So let's move on to step number three. And I'm glad you're here because that's what we're talking about next. Seek financial wisdom and education. I'm hoping I'm giving you that. If you're getting financial wisdom from this podcast, I would encourage you to share it with others. That's my goal. My mission here is to provide you with financial wisdom and education. Education is empowering. It will help you grow. The third step is to seek financial wisdom and education. Just as we seek guidance from God, We can also learn from those who have expertise in financial matters. This is what I do for a living, folks. I can help you. You just have to be willing to listen. But even bigger than that, you got to be willing to put these things into action. So let's look to the Bible. The book of Proverbs, chapter 19, 20 says, Listen to advice and accept instruction that you may gain wisdom in the future. Well, I think pretty much sums it up better than I can say. Listen to advice. Accept that instruction. And you're going to gain wisdom in the future. This verse emphasizes the importance of seeking advice and instruction to gain wisdom for the future. By humbly listening and learning from others, we can avoid making costly mistakes and make informed financial decisions. Listen, folks, if you listen to others, 
seek their advice, they're going to give you instruction on how to gain wisdom. But you have to be humble in that. You got to be willing to listen. You got to be willing to invest in those things. And they can help you avoid costly mistakes. Like I talk about this on my podcast every day. Things that you can avoid so you don't have to walk down a road that somebody else has been down. Maybe I was down it. Hey, listen, I've made a ton of financial mistakes. If we're all being honest, we all have made mistakes. Invest in your financial education by reading books. I'm not trying to sell you a book, but I'm going to tell you about my book. You can find it at askralphpodcast.com slash store. It's called Mastering Your Finances. It's 47 pages that will transform your financial future. You can buy it on amazon.com. If you're a, a member of Kindle, you can read it for free. Attend seminars. Seek advice from financial professionals who align with your Christian values. You know, continue to listen to this podcast or other podcasts that talk about healing your financials, but make sure you're doing it from a Christian perspective. Because you can certainly heal your financials from a non-Christian perspective, and you can make all kinds of wealth by selling your soul. That's a fact. I see it every day. And learn about budgeting. Learn about investing and debt management strategies. The truth is, by equipping yourself with knowledge, you can make them form decisions and navigate your financial journey with confidence. And that's what we all want. We all want that confidence. So as we wrap up today's episode, I want to remind you to visit our podcast page. I know I've already mentioned this at askralphpodcast.com. There's a ton of resources there. There's a ton of other podcast episodes you can go back and listen to. This is my mission field. I try to provide guidance every day about how to help you financially. We talk about resources for small business people. We talk about resources for individuals. Sometimes we make it funny. We call it the Wacky Wednesday episodes. But the goal of all of it is to empower you with information and knowledge. So before we wrap up today, allow me to ask a prayer. Dear Lord, we come before you today seeking your guidance, but more importantly, your healing in our financial journey. We acknowledge that you are the source of all provision and that you desire to bless us abundantly. We honor you with our wealth and the first fruits of our labor, knowing that when we prioritize you on our financial decisions, You will fill our barns with plenty, and our vats will overflow. As we evaluate our current financial situation, we ask for your wisdom and discernment. Help us to see areas that need improvement, and show it the path you want us to take. We commit our work to you, trusting that as we seek your guidance, our plans will be established. Teach us to be faithful stewards of your resources you've entrusted to us. Help us to manage our finances with integrity and honesty. Understanding that our faithfulness in the little things reflects our readiness for greater blessings. Grant us the discipline to create budgets, track our expenses, and save consistently, knowing that you will multiply our efforts. Lord, we also pray for financial wisdom and education. Guide us to resources and mentors who can impart knowledge and understanding. Give us the humility to seek advice and instruction so that we may gain wisdom for the future. Help us to make informed decisions and avoid those costly mistakes. We thank you for your provision and for your opportunity to grow in our financial journey. May we always remember that true wealth is not just about accumulating money, but about being faithful stewards of the resources you have given to us. As we seek your healing in our finance, we trust in your provision and wisdom. In Jesus' name, amen. So while you visit our podcast page at askroutpodcast.com, you can leave us a review, you can share your thoughts, or even send us a message with questions for future episodes. While you're there, make sure you join our email list so you can take part in our $25 weekly Amazon gift card drawing. So today, what do we discuss? We discussed the powerful approach of healing your finances in Jesus' name. We explored the biblical principles of honoring God with our wealth, committing our work to Him practicing faithful stewardship, and seeking financial wisdom. By applying these principles and seeking God's guidance, we can experience transformation and restoration in our financial lives. Well, thank you for joining me on this journey of mastering your finances with a Christian perspective. Remember, as you seek healing in your finances, trust in God's provision and wisdom. Stay faithful. Stay prayerful. And as I always say, Stay financially savvy, my friends. God bless you abundantly. 
Thank you for joining us on the Ask Ralph podcast. And with the simple click to subscribe, we'll invite you back to our next episode. And remember, financial issues don't have to be complicated. Just Ask Ralph. The information contained in this episode of Ask Ralph is based on data available as of the date of its release. Saggio Accounting Plus and Ask Ralph Media Inc. is under no obligation to update this content if changes occur. Applying this information to your specific situation requires careful consideration of all facts and circumstances, and any information provided is not to be considered as financial, tax, or legal advice. Please consult your tax advisor or attorney before acting on any material covered. 